Heinz Wolf, you're one of the lucky people whose life revolves very much around space and space science. Where did you learn your trade? How did you get involved in space? Well, I'm a small boy at heart, really. I, I think that's the, that's 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 the secret. I may look old, but I'm re really only about twelve or something like that, and have the enthusiasms of a twelve-year-old. I suppose in the 1960s, I started being consulted about the kind of experiment one would want to do in space, and then um, I was co-opted or volunteered or something like that uh, to go and work for the European Space Agency and run one of their committees. This was about 1976, and ever since then. The small boy hasn't really grown up very much, but the enthusiasm has persisted. I, what, I, what I would do with my day job, as it were, is that I run a research institute at Brunel University. And there it so happens we do quite a lot of work on space. We, we do contracts and we invent pieces of equipment which go on spacecraft. And we're now working on how to start farming on a spacecraft, because you really want to go to Mars or somewhere like that. You can't really take enough sandwiches. So you have to start growing food and reconditioning your air. And we think one can do this best by building a tiny world in the spacecraft where you eat your breakfast at one end and you grow your breakfast at the other end. And the carbon dioxide with you breathe, which you breathe out is taken out by the plants and grows more breakfast. I know that you spend some of your time working with young people and teaching them space science. Tell me a little more about that. Uh, we at Brunel, at the university where I work, run several space schools a year where I bear children or young people, young persons I suppose I should say, between uh, 14 and 16, often older ones between 16 and 19, come to us for a week or possibly eight or nine days and are totally immersed in space projects. They learn about space, they have discussion runs, they plan landings on the moon, uh, they build rockets and everybody has such a buzz of achievement. Another very exciting thing which we are doing, which again is one of the activities of space schools, or not actually happens during the school, is something called Space Arc, uh, where children all over the country, in fact all over the world, are encouraged to write an essay or uh, draw a picture or a combination of these and the photograph themselves, put it all on form, and this form, t tens of thousands of them, hundreds of thousands of them, will be recorded on a special magnetic tape, and the tape cassette will be put into a satellite, which will go on orbiting the Earth for hundreds of years, with everybody's little essay and everybody's little drawing inside it. And in many museums throughout the world, there will be copies of these tapes. And when your little child who's put the original essay in is a grandmother or a grandfather, they can go to the museum and they can type in their identity numbers and there will be the contribution which they have in the satellite orbiting the Earth. There was Sam, Miss Sam, Ham, Albert's one and Albert's two, Eleven mice, who were the dogs, Laika, Belka, Strelka, Pachelka, Zvadoshka, Mushka, Chelushka. Laika, Pachelka and Mushka all died in orbit. I know that the, um, the, the early missions, uh, that going to the toilet was, was a very, very crude system. Um, how did you go to the toilet in space? The toilet actually is very ingenious, I think it's superb. Um, <clears throat> because you can't flush your toilet with water like we flush on Earth, but we flushed it instead with air. Then I went to the toilet, switched on a switch on the wall, and air started to be sucked, sucked down through a funnel. And I went to the toilet in the top of this funnel, and everything I did was literally sucked away down through the funnel and through a tube into this large container underneath. What was re-entry like? Re-entry is the, the G-forces build up very slowly, but then they, they, they stay in their much higher four and a half G coming back to Earth, so it was difficult to breathe. I was being pushed back down into my seat. My ribs were pushing onto my lungs, so it was hard to breathe. And I could see the, the atmosphere around the side of the spacecraft gets so hot, forms a plasma around that. And that plasma is orange and yellow, and I could see all this around the side of the spacecraft. Then at one stage, as I looked through the window, I could see the surface of our Soyuz craft, our re-entry craft, and it was melting because it was so hot. Finally, 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 what advice would you give to someone who's in school now who perhaps thinks, oh, I might like to be an astronaut, yeah, but it's never going to happen to me? I thought, it's never going to happen to me. If there's something you really want to do, it's always worth going for it. And there will be plenty to go for in the future if you're keen on space. I can personally see people in space in sort of large hotels and going up there for holidays. Certainly in the next 20, 30 years, I believe there'll be more people from Britain flying, many more people from Europe certainly will be flying, 
Um, it's something that's very exciting because there is just so much to be done in space. I think that in the long term, uh, our drive and our enthusiasm and our need for, cult for this sort of culture will make us a space exploring species. I reckon they'll go back to the moon, you know, Rose. Yeah. I think, you know what, I've got a sneaking suspicion the Japanese are going to go to the moon next. Well, it's only a, you know. Russia has the Mir space station permanently manned, and they claim to be ready to send people to Mars. Meanwhile, NASA has designed the vehicle that will replace the space shuttle. It's called the National Aerospace Plane, and it may form part of the first manned international interplanetary mission. These days, no one nation could afford to go to Mars on their own. But if America, Europe, Russia and Japan all got together, a Mars mission could happen. Now, somebody would have to be the commander on the bridge of that mission, and it could be you. This program has been just a taste of things to come. Over the next few weeks we'll be finding out more about the moon and I should be talking to one of the Americans who actually went there, Buzz Aldrin, asking him what it was like to walk on the moon. We'll be finding out about the space shuttle and the ten-year-olds that are learning how to fly it and aliens. Is there really life on other planets? We aim to find out the answers. And the Soviets in space. I should be training with the Russian cosmonauts at Star City, the Cosmonaut Training Center. So join Phil Cornwell, Helen Sharman, OBE, and me, Gareth Jones, over the moon. I'm the urban spaceman, baby.